Financial Access 101, Moral Hazard and Microinsurance. For the world's poor, living with unpredictable and inadequate income flows makes it difficult to cope with risk. Catastrophic events such as illness or crop failure can be devastating financially. Those at the base of the pyramid may benefit greatly from insurance products, but are often not served by insurers. One reason markets fail to provide insurance to poor people is moral hazard. Because insurance may protect buyers from some of the costs of their actions, they might make different choices once they have insurance, taking on more risk. There are two types of moral hazard, ex ante, meaning before, and ex post, meaning after. Ex ante moral hazard is when a person who is insured changes their behavior. They may take unnecessary risks they would avoid if they didn't have insurance. For instance, a person with vehicle insurance might drive faster because he knows that he won't pay for all the damage caused by an accident. Or a person who knows she will receive an insurance payout if the crop yield is low might not work as hard to maximize her yield if the weather turns bad. Ex post moral hazard is when a person changes their behavior after an insured event occurs in ways that raise the cost of the insurer. For instance, a person with health insurance might visit the doctor more often than they need to. Or a farmer making an insurance claim after a low yield might claim an amount that is larger than the yield would have been under normal circumstances, or that they added fertilizer that they didn't. Moral hazard makes it hard for insurers to gauge actual risks in price insurance appropriately. To make sure that claims can be paid, insurance companies have to raise prices to cover the unknown effects of moral hazard, or find other ways to limit it. One method insurers use to reduce the impact of moral hazard is introducing copays, so that consumers share the cost if there is a payout. Insurers may also create strict requirements for receiving a payout, but these strategies can reduce the perceived value of the insurance policy. Of course, lower perceived value means fewer customers and less ability for the insurers to spread risk and that means higher prices or more restrictions and lower perceived value. Moral hazard creates an additional barrier to providers who would otherwise want to offer insurance to people who need it, and that limits options and availability for poor households. More research is needed to find effective combinations of tools to overcome moral hazard and provide insurance products that are valuable to both providers and consumers.